We've learned a lot about modules in the last video and we have seen how to create components in previous videos. It's time to see modules in action. In this video we create a module, mass create some components, have a closer look on the scaffolding actions and finally install the modules to our sites and check the results. We have analyzed the layouts in the beginning of the tutorial series and we sliced the page designs into components. Now it's time to have a more detailed look on those as we want to hand over the requirements to the development team to build them. So let's recap and get an overview of the components we want to create today. The first one is a client list component that you can see at the end of a lot of page designs. The component starts with a title and continues with a list of images, four in a row. What we will do here is having a parent component with a data source containing a title field, a single line text and multilist that references the client data source consisting of an image field. We structure it like that as the client item might be used with more data in other occasions at a later stage. On the about us page we find a team list that starts with a title and intro text followed by a list of cards showing members of the team with their images. Similar to the client teaser, we are going to create a parent component and data source template that consists of a title field as single line text and an intro text as a multi line text field. We will reference employee data sources in a multi list field that consists of employee image as image field, employee name as single line text field, and a role as single line text field as well. On the same page, there is a skills overview. Again, similar pattern. We have a parent component with a data source that starts with a title as a single line text, an intro text as multi line text and skills as multi list field that references skill items containing a name field as single line text and a rate field as number. The testimonial component is another list. For the purpose of showing another implementation case we have a testimonial parent item that does not contain fields but contains testimony items as sub items consisting of testimonial name as single line text, testimonial role as single line text as well and a testimonial image as an image and last but not least the quote as a multi line text. The last component I want to create is the feature list. Also here I follow the pattern of the client teaser meaning we have a parent list component that has a title as a single line text field, an intro text as a multi line text field and features as multi list that reference single feature items that contain a name as single line text and an icon as drop link. We will have to create the icon data sources as well. So let's get started. In the previous video I created the general components module. Now I need to create the component registration meaning the rendering items as well as the content model meaning the templates. The fastest way to do that is cloning an existing rendering, for example the promo rendering item. I described the process in a previous video so I will go a bit faster over the process here. I navigate to the promo component that I want to clone from going to layouts, renderings, feature, headless experience accelerator, page content, promo. Right click, choose scripts, clone rendering. I want to create a client list first. I select the module general components and select that I want to make a copy of the rendering parameters as well as the data source fields. The component is now cloned for me. Done. So let's have a look what got created. Below my module item there are now two add site item scaffolding actions. One to create the data folder for the client lists in the site I install the module to. The add site item scaffolding action allows to configure the location where I want to create the item. In my case that is the data folder of a site and the template I want to use for the item, in my case that's the client list folder. Furthermore, I define the name of the item that's being created. And I could also pre-fill the fields of the item. The second add item scaffolding action has been created to create an item of type available general component renderings under the available rendering item located in the presentation. This is a branch template, meaning a template that will create a certain structure of items. The name of this item will be General Components. This scaffolding action takes care that my component is displayed in the toolbox and the component list in the General Components section. Of course, the rendering item itself, meaning the component registration configuration, has been created. 
In the data source template field, the template for the data source is defined, which is the client list template. In the data source location field, it is defined where my data sources are expected. It uses a query to check in the site data folder below an item that is of types client list folder. In the templates, I can see the client list template being created as a copy of promo. I will change the fields later. Same as the client list folder. All insert options are already set. Please also note that all created items are located within the general components folder. Last but not least, let's check for the created branch templates. The first one is the available renderings branch template that will create the toolbox entry. Its sub-item represents the actual item that's being created, with the value referencing my new client list component. For the default variant, a branch template has been created as well. You can set up all this manually, but by cloning an existing rendering, you save a lot of time and with using modules, everything is in a very consistent structure. Now, this is all repetition. Let's move on with the team list component. Clone the promo, select module, copy rendering parameters and copy data source fields. Done. Next one is a skills overview. Select module, copy rendering parameters and copy data source fields again. Done. Testimonial list. Select module, copy rendering parameters and copy data source fields. Done. Last but not least, the feature list. Again, select the module, copy the rendering parameters, copy data source fields, done. All renderings have been created and with all the required items. Next step is to do the data modeling, so to create data source templates. The client list and client list folder templates have been created already by the clone process. But the client list needs the reference client items that are located in the client folder. So let's start with those templates first. I create a new template and name it client folder. I create a second template and name it client. Let me change the icon of the client folder to an actual folder icon. You can definitely select more precise icons, but I'll skip that for now. I create standard values for the client folder template to assign client template as insert options. Now I can define the data model for the client template. I name the section client, name the field client image, which is of type image and I use the source field to make sure that the users only select media items from a valid source using the dollar site media token. Now I can delete the sub-items of the client list template to remove all existing fields. I name the sections client list. The title field is of type single line text and the clients field is of type multi list. So I can select from the clients. I need to set the source field to the actual data source location. Herefore, I use the query and the dollar site token to reference any site context this module is installed to data, clients, which will be the name of the client folder item, and all children. Save. I create standard values for the client list as well to prefill the title field with the item name. This can be achieved with a dollar name token. Also the team list require the reference templates first, so I create an employee folder template and an employee template. Change to folder icon. Create standard values on the folder template. Select the employee template as insert options. I define the data model for the employee item. The section is named employee. I need the name field as single line text, role as single line text, and image as image field type using the dollar site media token in the source. Remove team list fields and define the new fields. Team, title, intro text as multi line text field, team as multi list with referencing the dollar site data employee folder and its children. 
Continue with the skills overview. I need skill folder template. And skill template. Change the folder icon. Create standard values on the folder template. Select the skill template as insert option. I define the data model for the skill item, the sections named skill. I need the name field as single line text and a rate as number. Remove skill overview fields that got copied from promo. And define the new fields. Skills, title, intro text as multi-line text field, skills as multi-list with referencing the dollar site, data, skills folder and its children. Next, the testimonial list. I need a testimonial folder template and testimonial template. Again, change folder icon, create standard values on the folder template, create the testimonial template as insert option. I define the data model for the testimonial item. The section is named testimonial. I need the name field as single line text, role as single line text image as image type and set the source with a dollar site media token and a quote as multi-line text. I create standard values for the testimonial field to set the item name as default for the name field using the dollar name token. I should have done that for the other templates as well. We'll do that later. Remove testimonial list fields that got copied from promo and define the new fields. Testimonial section Actually, this is not having any fields, as I wanted to showcase using sub-items here. So I need to create standard values for the testimonials list and set the testimonial as insert options. Last but not least, the feature list. Again, I need a feature folder template and a feature template. Change the folder icon, create standard values on the folder template Select the feature template as insert option. I define the data model for the feature item. The section is named feature. I need the name field as single line text and an icon field of type drop link. I will have to provide a path to the icons later as well. I create standard values to set the item name as default for the name field using dollar name token. Remove feature list fields that got copied from promo and define the new fields. Feature section, title as single line text, intro text as multi line text, and features as multi list. I set the source to dollar site, data, features, and the children using the asterisk. Let's see where I forgot some standard values. The client is fine. Employee requires standard values to prefill the name field with the item name. Feature is fine. Skill needs standard values again to prefill the name field. And testimonial is fine as well. When we cloned the promo rendering, we got scaffolding actions for the direct data source items. But as we are dealing with list structures that reference other fields, we need to make sure that the newly created data folder items are created in the site as well on module installation to avoid manual work and human error. So I create an additional add site item scaffolding action for the client's data item. The item should be created in the data folder and based on the client folder template. The item will be named clients. Make sure that this name matches what you configured in the source field of the client list template. A repeating task. Now for the skills data item. To be created under the data folder, based on skills folder template and named skills. Next, the employee data item. Under data, based on employee folder, named employees. Testimonials data item, data folder, 
Testimonials data folder named Testimonials. And lastly, Features data item under Data, based on Feature folder named Features. So the module, meaning the installation description, is ready. Let's give it a try. I navigate to the site and run the script Add Site Module. I select the General Components module. In the site, I can see now the data folders being created. And under Presentation, Available Renderings, I find General Components item that has all my renderings configured. On the site item itself, I can see in the Modules field that my General Components headless site setup has been installed. Let me create a test page. Test General Components and navigate to Pages. My new components appear in the component list as expected and I can add those. I create a data source item, client list footer. As I have neither implemented nor deployed any code that belongs to the components, I see an orange error message. Same for skills overview, team list, feature list and testimonial list. One thing is pending, which I said we are doing later, and that is creating the icon items for the feature list component. Taking a look at the static site design, I see that the icons are based on remix icons and they use a CSS class and a hex color code as inline styles. So let's create the data model for it. I navigate to the general components templates and in here I create a feature icon folder template and a feature icon template. I assign a folder icon, create the standard values item to set up the insert option for the feature icons and the feature icon folders. Now I can define the fields for the feature icon template. I need a field named class as single line text and a field named hex color as single line text as well. I want to create the icons now, so I navigate to the General Components Module folder. I add a template based on the Feature Icon folder template and name it Feature Icons. Now I can add icons, for example a paintbrush. Let me directly copy the path to the folder as I need that on the Feature template to configure the icon droplink source. Navigating back to the feature template, I can now set the icon source. Query. Now I can paste the path and I want the children. Checking on the standard values, I can directly see the paintbrush item appear in the dropdown. That looks good. I will now create the other icon data along with some test content based on the other components off screen. A few moments later. All the icons and content has been created so the application developer can start. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover SiteQuiz channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.